Hi, everybody, and welcome to the TensorFlow Lite for Microcontrollers uh, workshop at this virtual I.O. Uh, I'm really excited uh, to be here to talk about uh, some of the fun stuff that uh, the community and the team have been working on um, and show you how you can do some really interesting stuff on uh, tiny computers using machine learning. I'd just like to introduce myself quickly. Um, I'm Pete Warden. Uh, I'm the uh, tech lead for TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers uh, as part of the TensorFlow team. Uh, I've been working on TensorFlow uh, since it started. Um, and uh, I've also been um, uh, working on TinyML and running machine learning on embedded computers for the last few years. Um, and uh, together with my co-author, Daniel, uh, I wrote the TinyML book for O'Reilly. Uh, which talks about how to do a lot of the things that we're uh, going to be covering today. I'm also uh, been involved with the TinyML Foundation, uh, which helps put on a lot of really cool meetups um, at the moment. Um, but I bet you can find one in your area. They're all over the world now. Um, we also have an annual um, conference that you can join. Uh, that uh, is a really good chance to meet uh, lots of other people interested in all this kinds of work. And as you might be able to tell, I really love tiny computers. <laughs> I um, just find something fascinating about having uh, little devices like this Arduino um, that I'll be showing you, um, and many even uh, smaller devices that are tiny, cheap, um, use very, very little battery uh, power so they can be powered off batteries. Um, and I'm just really fascinated by all the things that you can do with them. So I'm really glad I'm getting a chance here to talk about some of them with you. And the goal of this workshop is to give you a flavor of what we're doing with TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers and the ways that you can use it to really get started with this whole uh, field of tiny ML. Um, you're going to, uh, if you make it through this workshop, you're going to learn how to play on some uh, invisible drums using the Arduino, uh, learn how to uh, control uh, a web browser using your finger, um, and how to actually train your own tiny uh, accelerometer driven motion model and deploy it to an Arduino. As well as that, uh, we're actually um, going to be uh, doing a, a challenge for people um, to try and see some of the cool things that the community can create with this technology. Uh, and you'll get a chance to be featured on uh, the Google channels um, and uh, Really, uh, we're hoping we get a chance to kind of show off some of the really neat things that people can do with this technology. And while I'm talking about participation, uh, one of the things I really want to encourage you to do during this workshop is ask questions. Um, I really think that a lot of the best learnings that you can actually get um, out of a live event like this uh, is getting answers to those questions. You might feel embarrassed. You might feel like, oh, this is this is kind of an obvious question. But I bet that there are a whole bunch of other people out there who are uh, wondering the same things. So please um, ask questions. We have uh, moderators online. Um, there's a button where you can actually ask questions. Um, put in your questions. The moderators will get them to me. Um, and hopefully we can actually, uh, you know, cover some things I might not have covered uh, because you're asking the right questions. Um, so just to get started at a really high level, um, you've heard this be say tiny ML. Um, what is it all about? So from 
my perspective, um, I helped sort of put together this very um, technical, you know, definition, sort of a little bit ab academic, um, which you can find on the tinyml.org uh, website. Um, but the key things you should take away from this are what I've um, put in bold. It's about using machine learning. Um, it's about dealing with sensor data, all of these microphones and accelerometers and uh, tiny cameras um, that you get on these embedded systems. And it's about running at extremely low power, usually less than a milliwatt. Um, and it's really that low power requirement that is the most distinctive thing about what we're doing here. Uh, because phones and other devices, even Raspberry, normal Raspberry Pis, not the new Picos, but normal Raspberry Pis, they, they can easily take um, a watt of power or more to run. Um, and we're talking about devices that can run uh, in a thousandth of that power. And so they're able to run on batteries or solar power for a long time. Um, so why is this important? Why am I so excited about this stuff? Um, having computers that are able to do interesting things that are really tiny and hardy means that these computers can end up in all sorts of places where you've never put a phone or a laptop um, or you know a server or some kind of uh, cloud machine. Um, you can actually have these in uh, environments that are extremely hot, wet, um, out in the middle of nowhere, um, where you would never normally be able to do um, similar uh, stuff with more traditional computers. And having these devices able to run uh, machine learning means that you don't need to have um, a multi-million dollar cloud data center or pay a lot of money for GPUs in order to start using machine learning. Uh, machine learning uh, can be democratized if you can run it on these really cheap, uh, easy to get hold of devices. And one of the key things that I mentioned before as well is that low battery consumption. Um, if you think about all of the devices that um, traditional computing covers, whether it's mobile, uh, you know, phones, where you have to plug them in every night, a person has to plug them in, um, or uh, clouds, cloud or laptop computers where, again, you have to be plugged into the mains uh, either all the time or um, frequently, uh, which means you have to have an environment that's been uh, set up for that. Um, if you have really low battery consumption or solar energy um, powered or some other energy harvesting, um, then these devices can be completely independent of people. Um, you couldn't have a whole bunch of devices, um, you know, if you imagine having to charge devices like you charge your phone, um, you can't have more than like one or two devices like your phone uh, because you're otherwise you'll just end up spending all your time kind of plugging these devices in or you'll be running around changing batteries all the time. Um, if you can get this really low battery consumption, then these devices become independent of us. They don't need us uh, to do constant maintenance and care to them. Uh, uh, so that's one of the underappreciated uh, you know, ways that these embedded devices um, make entirely new use cases possible. And I also think there's something really important about data that can be processed on device is processed on device. You don't have to send your data anywhere. Um, I'll be talking later about things like voice interfaces that can run entirely locally. Um, so you don't have to uh, send audio data anywhere, uh, which really helps for uh, latency 
uh, and also helps for uh, privacy as well. Uh, you know, you can make sure that any of the data that's being used doesn't ever end up going anywhere. And what I have been really fascinated by, um, and the reason I came into this area was when I first joined Google back in 2014, um, I spoke to the team behind the uh, hot word, the wake word recognition for um, Google's voice interfaces. Uh, I won't say the phrase because it will wake up a bunch of my phones and probably a bunch of your phones, but uh, internally we refer to it as OKG to avoid <laughs> triggering all of that stuff. But what really blew me away was that they had models that were only 13 kilobytes in size. So they were using these really tiny, minute models to run on the always-on DSPs that are in a lot of Android phones um, to listen out for that wake word so the battery wouldn't run down. Um, and that really got me thinking, OK, wow, what can we actually do if we can do something useful with a th you know so useful with a 13 kilobyte neural network model what other problems can we solve with these really tiny models too um, and that's uh, sort of one part of the tiny ml side the other part is that there's been this amazing explosion of really interesting hardware that can run in that sort of milliwattish range um, it turns out that it's totally possible to do a lot of compute in a very small power budget uh, from a hardware side. It's a lot harder to do communication. It's a lot harder to do radio. It's hard to have very much in the way of um, memory. But if all you want is lots of compute, uh, lots of multiply ads, then turns out that's a comparatively easy ask for a lot of uh, hardware designs. And um, there's been this explosion of really interesting hardware platforms uh, in this space. So TinyML is really the intersection of these two. Um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, and using an Arduino board here as a demonstration. Uh, but there are a whole bunch of uh, really interesting uh, hardware platforms out there. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, we work a lot with SparkFun. We work a lot with Adafruit. Uh, there's been some fantastic work on ESP32 um, devices with Espressive. Uh, we've worked with um, Cadence on the DSP side. We work a lot with ARM um, to, and they contribute code um, and many, many others. So uh, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers I'll be talking about is really designed to run across a wide range of all these low power hardware devices. And this is where TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers comes in. We have really been focused on, OK, how can we get some good models, um, some good application use cases um, so that we can uh, run on uh, all of these uh, pieces of hardware? Now. Maybe you didn't uh, believe me, <laughs> but we actually have a, a great video that Google's Creative Lab have put together um, that uh, we're going to play uh, in a second that uh, gives uh, another perspective with some rather uh, awesome graphics. So if we can play that video. In 2015, we introduced TensorFlow, an open source library for large scale machine learning. It was a big deal for us. It was also just big. So we made it smaller and smaller, which was big. But then we asked, can we go bigger by going even smaller? So we took small and made it tiny, which was huge. Because now TensorFlow fits on the computer this big that costs this much, runs for this long, without connecting to this. It's TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. You can use it to track motion in sports, maintain and monitor your crops, or discover the depths of the ocean. The possibilities are endless. 
we can't wait to see what you do with it. I absolutely love that video. Um, it's uh, by the Google Creative uh, Lab, uh, mostly based out in New York, um, who've also done a lot of the experiments I'm going to be showing you. Um, so, how does this whole uh, tiny ML process work? Um, if you've got any experience with machine learning, which you don't need uh, to dive in, um, but if you do, uh, this uh, loop that I'm going to show you here is going to look pretty familiar. You have to gather the data. You have to design and train a model. Um, because we're deploying on these devices that have such tiny amounts of memory, just tens of or hundreds of kilobytes, uh, we need to quantize the model down to eight bits uh, rather than floating point so that it will actually fit and run efficiently. Um, and then we need to get it from the computer that you've been training it on and put it onto a microcontroller. Um, and I'm quite excited by what we've actually put together um, with these experiments uh, because I think it helps you do a lot of these stages um, in a way that's uh, a lot easier to get into uh, and a lot faster to start getting results um, than some of the uh, traditional uh, tutorials that you might have found. So that's a good lead in to how can you actually get started? Um, so don't worry if you don't catch all of these slides. Um, if I'm going to hang out on this slide for a bit um, so that you can actually try and uh, grab some of these uh, URLs. Um, but if you look on the, uh, the Experiments with Google uh, site, you can also uh, find links to these as well. Um, I'm going to be working through the uh, readmes uh, or the readme for uh, installing this stuff. Um, I'm going to talk through in a few slides first, and then I'm actually going to go to screen sharing and try and do all of the installation um, and all the way through to actually running the demos and training our own um, models uh, live. Um, so as you saw earlier, Anything can happen. Uh, I hope you can uh, wish me luck and keep your fingers crossed. Um, but what we're going to be doing um, is uh, hopefully you have an Arduino. Um, the Tiny Machine Learning Kit is a great uh, pack uh, to actually get. Um, though I'm also going to be talking about a uh, cheat code that uh, lets you skip a lot of these steps by getting a board with a pre-installed, a pre-flashed uh, version. So you don't actually have to um, go through some of these uh, extra steps. Um, so I'll talk about that um, as we get through this. Um, but if you want to install everything from scratch, uh, get the Tiny Machine Learning Kit uh, from Arduino, or just get any um, Arduino Nano BLE Sense 33 uh, board. Um, and uh, we'll install the Arduino IDE. Um, we'll make sure we can actually connect uh, the board. Um, we'll make sure we can actually uh, find the board in our ports, uh, which can be uh, a little um, tricky sometimes. And uh, we'll be installing the libraries that you need. Uh, then we'll be grabbing the sketch and compiling and uploading the sketch. And if you actually get the pre-flashed uh, Arduino Nano BLE device that I'll be talking about uh, towards the end, you can actually skip all of those steps. All you have to do is plug in the, uh, the battery um, and go to one of these URLs, and the sketch that we're installing will actually um, start working immediately. Um, and I'll be explaining a bit more of the magic of how that works um, as we go through the installation process, uh, because there's quite a long uh, time where you, when you have to uh, 
uh, wait for the board installation to work. So you'll have uh, plenty of chance to see me um, chatting about uh, what's happening under the hood. So now it's demo time. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is grab the Arduino IDE. Um, and depending on what platform you're on, uh, you can see you've got download options for Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, and since I'm on Mac OS, I'm going to uh, click on this. Um, I've already donated, <laughs> so I'm going to click on the uh, just download. I've now managed to um, start the uh, Arduino IDE. Um, the next thing I need to do is install the board package. Uh, if you have your Arduino already plugged in, you might see this uh, shortcut, this little message about installing uh, the package. Um, now, uh, if you don't see that, don't worry. You can just go to Tools, uh, Board, Boards Manager, and then you'll. If you do a search for Embed, uh, you'll see Arduino Embed OS Nano Boards, and this includes the Arduino Nano 33BLE Sense, uh, which is the one we want. Oh, where did it go? There we go. So make sure we got the latest package. And then I'm going to click on install. And this is going to take a few minutes. So uh, while this is happening, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're actually doing here. Um, when I've been running workshops, I have found one of the biggest obstacles to getting people up and running is that USB UART drivers, which is what we're going to be using here through the Arduino IDE. Um, they're great when they work, but especially on a lot of Windows machines, um, but even on um, some of the uh, you know Mac machines and Linux machines and other setups I've had, uh, getting the drivers uh, to work correctly can be really, really tough. Um, and what's worse is that debugging why the drivers aren't working is really, really hard. So if I have a classroom full of um, you know, 20 students, uh, 15 of them will probably be able to have success with this, but there'll probably be uh, five who are just uh, left stuck, not able to uh, get uh, their uh, projects off the ground, even just to get started. Um, because they're running into these um, connection issues between plugging the board into the USB port and actually getting your computer to it talk to the board. So looking for a way to try and make that easier so that people's first impression of doing this kind of tiny machine learning isn't this super frustrating process that's really hard to debug, um, I decided to take advantage of the Bluetooth low energy connection that's available on this Arduino Nano board and a lot of other um, modern connected uh, embedded development boards. And the other key ingredient is that Chrome and Edge browsers actually offer a web interface to talk across Bluetooth low energy to any devices that uh, the user connects to. So by bringing those two sides together, um, what we've been trying to build is um, a device that all you have to do is plug it in, and then it runs a sketch uh, on the Arduino board that sits there listening on Bluetooth for a um, website or any other thing that can talk BLE, but in this case, all of these examples are using web BLE and JavaScript through a website um, to give it a model to run. Um, and also, um, the board is able to transmit uh, information about the 
gestures, the accelerometer information um, about gestures that are being performed uh, by the board. So you've got this great two-way API. Um, and the big missing piece uh, that we're trying to uh, sort out with the uh, Spark Farm boards that we'll be talking about, um, you know, we'll tell you how to uh, get hold of uh, towards the end of this talk, is having that sketch that sits there and listens on Bluetooth looking for some web uh, uh, site that speaks that language to actually um, uh, give it a model or receive some training data from it. And so all of the experiments I'll be showing you are actually uh, built using that technology. So the good news is uh, we've managed to get that board installed. Um, and if I go to um, board here, I can actually choose the Arduino Nano 33 BLE. Um, and once I've chosen the board, you'll see that the board shows up there. Um, and hopefully, you should now see that there's this slash dev slash cu dot something, something, something. That's actually the one that you want. Um, and the very first thing I'm actually going to do is just make sure that I can upload a simple Blink program uh, before I do anything else. And the Arduino has this really nice um, uh, set of examples uh, built in. So I'm going to choose Blink. This will uh, load up this uh, Blink sketch. I will um, try pressing Upload. So it will compile the sketch um, and hopefully um, uh, send it over the USB UART connection that I was talking about uh, having so many problems with um, and uh, get it uh, uploaded. And you can see it's just uploading and flashing. And what we should see now is it's done. And if you can see, uh, it's probably very small, but there's a little LED blinking uh, on the board. So that actually worked. Um, if you are having problems, uh, there's actually uh, a great FAQ for the connection problems uh, here. So um, you can find it through the uh, readme's that we link to. Um, there's a lot of often like port um, and other issues uh, that uh, this covers. But um, thankfully, uh, this worked first time for me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is install some of the uh, libraries that I actually need. Um, and the libraries are listed um, here. Uh, Arduino LSM 9 DS1, which is the uh, accelerometer library. Arduino BLE, so it can talk through um, the Bluetooth low energy connection. And the TensorFlow Lite uh, for microcontrollers library. Um, and again, uh, Arduino has this great uh, system where you can just use the IDE to ins install these things. Um, so if I go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and go for, um, I'm going to look for LSM, the LSM 9 ES1 library. And make sure I've got an up to date version. Just install that. This is going to be a lot quicker than the board's uh, installation, thankfully. Um, so I'm going to grab the Arduino BLE library. Make sure that's I install this. And I'm going to grab the TensorFlow Lite library and install this as well. And once that's finished, um, I'm then 
going to uh, grab the grab the sketch and let's see if I can uh, just find the right link to the sketch. So, uh, and you can also see this getting started uh, guide here, which uh, uh, we link to. Um, sorry, just a second. Uh, you can download the latest release. You'll find a uh, link uh, here. So if we go to uh, this uh, TF4 Micro Motion Kit Arduino sketch dot zip, then I'm going to open that up. And you'll see that there's a dot inno, which is the um, sketch uh, suffix. I'll open that up. And with any luck, uh, this is what I was talking about uh, when I said that there was a uh, sketch that sits and listens to uh, Bluetooth. And when it hears, um, that a website is trying to upload a model to it, um, it uh, will accept that model. Um, and it will also, um, and you can ignore the uh, warnings here. Uh, they look scary, but they're just um, uh, uh, harmless. Um, and what this does is it sits there and it actually uh, listens out for uh, websites trying to connect. And it also, if a website wants, uh, it can actually get information about what's happening uh, with the device. Um, it will uh, receive um, kind of gestures that you're actually doing. And we'll use this a little bit later on to help do some uh, training. Um, so this compilation will take, um, again, uh, a couple of minutes. Um, you can, uh, you know, take a look at the code. All of this work that I'm going to be showing you is open source. Um, so you can find uh, everything that you need on GitHub. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, feel free to uh, dig in, uh, file uh, bugs or pull requests on uh, this code. Um, if you're interested in the uh, workings of this, um, you can see within the loop function the very high level uh, work that it's doing. Um, if it's in the middle of a file transfer, it will be updating the file transfer. Um, if it's um, sending data back to a website, it will actually do um, IMU uh, connections. Um, and You'll see it's flashing now. When it's finished flashing, you should see uh, the on here, here flashing red, green, and blue. So I bring it closer. Hopefully, you can see that. Uh, and what that means is it's actually uh, waiting uh, for you to uh, provide a um, model. It's waiting for a website to connect and tell it, hey, here's a model for you to run. Um, the nice thing about the pre-flashed kits is all of this stuff I've done with downloading libraries and boards and connecting over USB and dealing with ports, that's already been done. If you get a pre-flashed uh, Arduino, um, then all you have to do is plug it in, and you should see this uh, red, green, and blue light flashing, and that means that you're ready. You're ready to go to some of these experiments that I'm going to be showing you. Um, as I mentioned, these experiments are websites because you can use JavaScript from a website to uh, talk to this board, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, you do need a browser like Chrome or um, uh, Edge. Um, and 
while it does work, uh, you, I've got this working as well from an Android phone using Chrome, uh, though not on iOS because that's using Safari. But on the Android phone, it works, but um, the model download is a little slower. So enough talking. Let me show you what this stuff can do. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is connect. Um, and this brings up a dialogue that searches for any devices that support the protocol uh, that we've defined for talking to this Arduino sketch. And you can see uh, this kit actually shows up. So I'm going to uh, pair with it. And down here, you'll see that it's sending a model over to the device. So next, um, I'm going to follow the video. Uh, and it says, hold the board so that the LED is facing you and the USB connector is pointed down towards your wrist. So I think I've got that set up. Um, and let's see how well I can actually play the drums. Uh, so I'm going to try an up high. And fingers crossed, this works. There I go. I'm going to try to the side. Um, and I don't know if the audio is coming through well, but you should hear that it's actually playing a drum. So to the side. And then down low. Well, I'm not going to. Um, win a scholarship to Juilliard with uh, <laughs> this performance. But uh, the good news is um, this machine learning model is working. Um, and ooh, you see, it's not, it's not perfect. But it's not too bad. <laughs> and uh, all of this code is open source. This is trained using. Uh, the uh, trainer that I'm going to show you um, as the last experiment. Um, so you can actually uh, try this yourself. Um, next, I'm going to show you uh, Finger UI. Um, and in order to show this off, uh, I'm going to uh, disconnect. Uh, so I'm going to uh, close. Air snare, and hopefully, uh, I'll just wait, and you should see the red, green, blue light flashing again. So that means it's ready uh, to actually uh, connect. So for this one, um, I actually need to um, use a little rubber band to connect uh, this finger and. Luckily, I have one here. I believe with the kits that you'll be able to get your hands on, uh, you will actually uh, be able to um, use a more ergonomic uh, strap, a Velcro strap, I think they've, they've arranged. But I'm going to just cut off blood circulation to my finger for a minute or two um, in the interests of science. Uh, and. Hopefully, uh, you can see that I have now strapped this to my finger. Uh, I'm going to uh, connect. And you'll see that same um, dialogue again. And it's sending the TensorFlow model. And then. I'm going to uh, have to remember, I'm just keeping an eye on the different uh, uh, making sure I can remember all of the different uh, gestures here. I think I think I have them. Uh, so right, there I go, left, left. Right, right, then I'm going to try pluck. Ooh. Yeah. Ah, there I got pluck, but it came off my finger. Ah, that was my fault.
and 12. Yay. So this is really fun. <laughs> Sorry, I should uh, I should uh, let you have a play with this uh, rather than me having all the fun. Uh, but as you can see, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, different things that you can do with uh, different gestures that you can actually recognize with this. Um, and you may be wondering, OK, how did we uh, create this? Well, I'm going to uh, close this window and then move over to the tiny motion trainer. Um, and again, I'm just going to wait and make sure that the uh, board has now uh, gone back to flashing red, green, and blue, which means it's ready to start. Um, I'm going to take this off my finger so I get some, some blood back uh, and get rid of the, uh, this rubber band. Um, and I'm going to choose uh, to start a new project. Um, and this is using uh, TensorFlow uh, JS. Um, and uh, you can see here you've got instructions. Uh, and we're going to be capturing some data. And then we're going to be uh, training a model using this data. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pair the device. Uh, these defaults uh, should be good, uh, at least for this initial go. I'm then going to um, add a couple of labels. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, actually, I'll call this one sideways. And then I'm going to start recording some gestures going uh, sideways. You can see I'm just flicking left, right. And I'm going to see if I can capture uh, 10 of these. And if you get any wrong, you can uh, go in and uh, delete them. I'm going to stop recording. Uh, you can use the X button if you got if you had any that you didn't want to use, um, and so I'm just checking my. Sounds like somebody's chatting me. Great. Um, I'm going to now do an up down uh, gesture. So I'm going to create this gesture. And I'm going to go up, down. Um, oh, I have to uh, choose it and then go start recording. And then I'm going to go, actually, this is going to be down, up. Oh, and that first one I don't think was right. So I'm going to try it again. Uh, so I'm going to uh, stop recording there. And now I'm hoping that I've got enough data to actually uh, train a model. So you'll see these uh, graphs. You don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, if you just wait for the... training to finish. Um, you can see it very quickly got to 100% training accuracy. Um, that's because it has a very small amount of data. So um, if you were doing this uh, for a uh, you know a more a project that had to be more bulletproof, um, you would actually uh, try it uh, with a lot more. Um, so let's see how this model does. So it detected that I got sideways. Let's see it again. Yeah, and then up, down. 
So this is use this hasn't um, uploaded the model uh, to the board yet, um, but this is just using the gestures that were captured and running it on the uh, ML model inference on the TensorFlow.js side here. So finally, um, we can actually uh, download a quantized version of this. And once it's finished processing, it will actually see something uh, that you're able to um, use as an Arduino sketch. So if I open up this, um, you'll see that there's actually an example with a model.h file. Oh, no, I do not want you uh, Xcode. I would prefer Visual Studio Code. Or you can use Arduino to open it, too. Um, but this model.h is um, a uh, binary version uh, C data array that contains the quantized model. Um, and you can actually use that in, uh, there's an included .ino, uh, which lets you uh, flash and uh, run this. Um, so I think that's uh, all I wanted to do for the uh, screen sharing. That was the demo. Um, what does this all mean? The reason I'm working on this is because I'm really, really excited about all of the different things we can actually build with this, all of the different problem domains that this kind of work can actually be applied to. Um, everything from agriculture, you can imagine having loads of tiny devices that um, uh, are in fields that are keeping an eye out for crop pests or crop diseases uh, using cameras um, and you know maybe even look at things like how well watered the crops are and really help us grow food in a much more efficient way with fewer chemicals. Um, one of the things that I remember from the before times uh, before we went into lockdown was sitting in uh, a meeting at work um, and uh, if it was a really boring meeting and nobody was moving in the meeting room, the lights would go off because they're just motion triggered. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if you actually had um, little cameras that were completely local, but that could actually tell how many people were in a room um, and adjust the AC, adjust the lighting, and all sorts of uh, stuff like that. Um, in the home and around things like health and fitness, um, there are loads of applications. There was a really neat um, Soli uh, project called uh, Gamer that um, went into uh, kids' uh, soccer boots and actually uh, could tell how much uh, real-world activity they were getting and then would reward them in FIFA, the game, uh, for that kind of um, activity. Um, I would love to uh, talk to more toy companies. I think there are some really neat things we could do here. As you've seen, the Google Creative Labs have done some really good stuff around art and music. Um, I would love to get these devices, uh, especially the pre-flashed versions, into high schools, because uh, I think it's a really great way of giving people a very different approach to machine learning and an easy way to get started. Um, and I love... Uh, getting this stuff into things like oceanography and really helping uh, wildlife and the environment. Um, and I have to say as well, I, I love that business monkey in the uh, little workspace uh, icon there. That was, uh, that was one of my favorite parts of the uh, slides that the Creative Labs teams put together. So to wrap up here, I wanted to give you some pointers to um, some other resources that you might find useful. Uh, tensorflow.org is the central hub for everything around uh, TensorFlow. Um, all of the experiments that I've shown you, um, together with links to the uh, GitHub open source code, um, you can find on experiments.withgoogle.com. 
Um, there's a free course on TinyML um, that I helped put together, together with Harvard um, and the edX team um, and some of the fantastic um, educators there. Um, you can take it for free. Um, you, uh, you pay uh, if you want to get a certificate, but everything is accessible, um, just uh, doing it for free. And I highly recommend it. It's, uh, uh, I think it um, came out really well. Um, and uh, the Arduino board that I've been mentioning here, you can actually find it at this link. Um, so uh, I would uh, you know, check that out. And as I mentioned at the start, uh, there's this TensorFlow microcontroller challenge. We want to see what you can build uh, with this technology. Uh, we're hoping to see some really innovative, cool, fun, useful uh, websites. And we're going to be putting up um, prizes of uh, $2,500, uh, five prize uh, for the five winners that are selected, as well as we'd love to feature your work. Um, and if you go to this link, you can actually find out how to uh, get um, some uh, some we're we're giving away hundreds of free devices um, that you should be able to uh, you know get pre-flashed and skip a lot of the uh, steps that we discussed here. Ah, the question is: Will the library work with other boards apart from the Arduino, especially ESP32 um, and other IDEs like Platform IO? Uh, yes, definitely. We try very hard to work. Uh, with as many boards as possible. The nice thing about the uh, machine learning stuff is that it's just math. Um, so uh, we don't actually have to um, uh, rely on many platform specific things. We do have some platform optimizations for things like ARM uh, devices or um, other uh, platforms where we can implement optimizations or the hardware providers can implement optimizations, but they all of this actually runs um, with uh, uh, on. You can actually find uh, downloads for ESP32. You can find downloads for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, you can find uh, you know there's a lot of uh, we've done a lot of work with Adafruit and SparkFun. Um, and a lot of these other uh, devices that are out there. And we're always keen to try and help uh, people port uh, to uh, new devices. So I think we're just coming up to the end of our time here. Um, I'm just uh, checking the DOI here. There's a question about alerting me when it recognizes one of 154 classes of birds on a pre-trained model. Um, 154 classes aren't necessarily too much, but I, I'm guessing that the biggest problem there would be trying to gather enough data and trying to come up with a uh, model uh, that works uh, well enough in the field. Um, but um, my email is petewarden at google.com, or I'm Pete Warden on Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, um, I would be happy to, uh, you know, chat more about any of these uh, applications. Um, and uh, there's a question here about training and retraining. Uh, at the moment, you can't uh, train models uh, in the field, but you can um, run pre-trained models. Okay. Um, so. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks so much to Creative Labs. Uh, they've been fantastic. Um, and thanks to the crew uh, who helped put this uh, workshop together. <laughs>